our solutions to perfect problem two for math 60. Um, basically, we're given two different algebraic expressions and asked to simplify them. Um, and then a little check in here, it says the answer should be the same if we did everything right. Um, so all right, I guess we'll start with A. This, uh, simplifying this is difficult for a few reasons, um, but one of them is kind of the double set, set of parentheses. What I mean by that is I have these parentheses here around the one minus x, but then those are kind of hidden within these outer more parentheses here. Um, so that gives you a couple options on how you handle this problem. For me, I like to get rid of the innermost parentheses first. So to get rid of these parentheses, I'd have to take this negative three and distribute it into the parentheses. Um, common mistake is to distribute three into the parentheses, but actually negative three is what you'll want to distribute. So if you do that, negative three times negative one, or sorry, negative three times positive one is negative three. Negative three times negative x is positive three x because a negative times a negative is a positive. That takes me here. Um, again, options on exactly how you proceed. I think what I would do next is look inside these parentheses. I kind of, my goal is to get rid of these parentheses, or at least that's what I see. So I got to take this two and distribute it into the parentheses. However, rather than distribute it to one, two, three, four, five different terms in there, I can combine like terms, make things a little bit easier. I have six and a negative three and a negative one. So six minus three is three, minus one more is two. And then I got minus one x and plus three x. So if I put those together, I just get plus two x. Um, and now that I've combined like terms, it's a little bit less work to distribute this two in. So to get rid of these parentheses, I take this positive two and distribute it to each of the two terms inside the parentheses. Two times two is four, two times two x is four x. And then don't forget, you still got this three hanging out out here. Um, and now I can combine like terms one more time. I only have one term with an x in it, but I have two plus four plus three, three different constant terms. Two plus four is six, plus three more is nine. So four x plus nine is what this thing simplifies to. Uh, another common mistake is to try to take this a step further to add four and nine and call it, I don't know, 13 x or something. Uh, but you can't do that because they're not like terms. This term is your x terms, and this term is your constant terms. All right, and then in part b, um, I want to do something kind of similar. I want to simplify, we got negative 4 plus 6 times a bunch of fractions. Awesome. I'm sure people are thrilled to see a bunch of fractions. Uh, copy that down right, minus 7x. Um, so when we're simplifying this, you kind of have a few options. I mean, our overall goal is to do a lot like what we did up in the first example here, where we sort of get rid of parentheses so that we can combine like terms. So I want to get rid of these parentheses here. There's a few different ways you can get rid of those parentheses. One way would just be to take this 6 and multiply it through right now to distribute to each of these four terms. Um, I don't think most people will think to do it that way. I think what most people will think to do is before you distribute, they'll combine like terms on the inside of the parentheses. So they'll have to figure out, maybe down at the bottom of the screen here, I can figure out um, what I get when I combine like terms. Uh, so 1 half x plus 4 thirds x. Let's see, sure, I could write that right here. 1 half x plus 4 thirds x. Well, what I need to do is I need to add up 1 half and 4 thirds. Unfortunately, that's hard to do because I have different denominators. I need a common denominator. The least common denominator in this case is 6. So if I multiply this by 3 over 3, I get 3 sixths x plus, I'd have to multiply this by 2 over 2 in order to get that same denominator of 6. If I multiply the top and the bottom by 2, I'd get 8 sixths x. Now that I have a common denominator, I have 3 sixths of these x things and 8 sixths of these x things. I can add the 3 and the 8 to get 11 sixths of this x thing. Um, and I've managed to combine these two like terms. And so if you do that same thing, you can combine 3 halves, it's my other constant term in here, and 2 thirds. Um, same idea, we need a common denominator, and in this case it's going to be that same denominator, 6. So I'll multiply this by 3 over 3 gives me 9 sixths. Multiply this by 2 over 2. 
and I get 4 sixths. 9 sixths plus 4 sixths is 13 sixths. Um, and with that work, I mean, maybe I can kind of hide this over in the corner here. I can simplify what I have up here. Inside the parentheses, instead of 1 half x plus 4 thirds x, I have 11 sixths x. And instead of 3 halves plus 2 thirds, I got 13 sixths. Um, and now I'll take this 6 and distribute it through to each of these two terms to get rid of my parentheses. Um, maybe I'll just write it here and I'll show my work off to the side. It turns out that 6 times 11 sixth x is just 11 x. And 6 times 13 six is just 13. Where I got that from, maybe I need to again go in green here. Um, sure, I can squeeze it in here. Is 6 times 11 sixth x. Really when you're multiplying a number in a fraction, it helps to think of this as a fraction. So to make 6 a fraction, we'd write it as 6 over 1. And now if I have to multiply 6 over 1 times 11 over 6, I could either multiply straight across and get 66 sixths and then try to reduce that. Or I could cancel stuff out before I multiply across. I cancel out this 6 and this 6 and be left with just 11 over 1x. In other words, 11x. Sort of same idea if I take this 6 times this 13 6. Oops, 13 6. You can think about the 6 as 6 over 1. And then cancel out these two 6 and be left with 13. So that's how I got from this step down to this step. And now I'm really close to done. Now all I have to do is combine like terms. Uh, 11x minus 7x is 4x. Negative 4 plus 13 uh, is 9. And so what I'm left with is 4x plus 9. Same thing I got up here. That's good because I think I had like a hint. Did I? Yeah, the two answers should be the same. So good, I got the same answers. Um, so I guess we can call that good. That's the end of this problem.